Okay, so let's apply some of our log laws uh, just to simplify these expressions. So if we're going to add, I guess the key is to remember that everything has to be about the same base, doesn't it? So they're both base 10, so log base 10, 5 plus log base 10, 2. We multiply the numbers, so we get log base 10, 10, which is just 1. Similarly, if, again, the bases are the same, um, we divide the numbers, so log base 4 of 20 divided, log base 4 of 20 divided by 5 is log base 4 of 4, which is also 1. Uh, let's make use of some of the other laws. 16 can be expressed as 2 to the power of 4. So the key is wherever possible, see if you can convert the number that we're looking at into the same as the base, That's the base raised to a power. So in this case, the base we're talking about is 2. So we can write 16 as 2 to the 4, which means the 4 can come out the front and we get log base 2, 2, which is just 1. So we get 4 as an answer. Um, a couple of ways we could do this. We could just... They're all log base 3, so I could just do 27 times 9 and then divide it by 81 because it's a subtraction. Or if I simplify each term separately, 27 is 3 to the power of 3, 9 is 3 to the power of 2, 81, 3 to the power of 4. Each of those powers come out the front and we just end up with the log 3, 3 being 1. And so we end up with 1 as an answer. Right, if we want to solve our equations involving x, we again, we apply our log laws. I guess the key to remember, if we have any coefficients out the front, we take that back into the log expression. So 2 natural log of x is the same as natural log of x to the power of 2. Uh, and then we notice again that they're all base e. So if we look at the left-hand side, we're subtracting. So we divide the term, so I get x squared over x minus 1. So natural log of x squared over x minus 1 is equal to natural log of x minus 4. So for that to be true, the expressions inside the logs have to be equal. So we equate them. So x squared over x minus 1 has to equal x minus 4. Multiply the x minus 1 across and expand. We do a little bit of manipulation and I end up, to get, end up with x is equal to 4 fifths. But, and it's easily missed, we should check to see the, valid, check the validity of our answer. So if x is equal to 4 fifths, for example, into x minus 1, natural log of x minus 1, it would be undefined because we're going to get the natural log of a negative number. So in actual fact, even though algebraically we can get a solution, x equal to 4 fifths, in this circumstance, in this situation, there is no solution, okay, because our algebraic solution doesn't fit the scenario. All right, so same thing, bring the three out the front, so I get an x cubed. I put the log across to the left-hand side, so minus log base 10 x to the power of five, so I put that into the power, um, equals minus two. So again, I've got log expressions on the left-hand side, so I can bring them together. So I log base 10 of x cubed on x to the five, which is the same as one on x squared. If I simplify that one on x squared, or rearrange that one x on x squared, make it x to the power of minus 2, and then I can bring that minus 2 out the front and get log base 10 of x. Divide both sides by minus 2, and I get log base 10 of x is equal to 1. And then if I use my log index transformation, 10 to the power of 1, put the 1 there, um, is equal to x. All right, keep working through. So we've got the 2 again comes into the power, so I get x plus 2 squared minus natural log of x is equal to the natural log of 3 times x minus 1. So the 3 is inside that sort of log expression. So the left-hand side, I can get my x plus 2 all squared over x because it's a subtraction equals natural log of 3 times x minus 1. Again, my expressions are both logs, so again, I equate. So my x plus 2 all squared on x is equal to 3x minus 3, if I expand that bracket. Multiply my x across. Uh, multiply my x across, so I get 3x squared minus 3x, and now group all my coefficients together, all my terms together. I end up with 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is equal to 0. A little bit of cross method, 2x minus 1x minus 4, I get x is equal to a half or 4. Again, let's just check both of those. If x is equal to half, the 3x minus 1 expression is undefined, so that's not a valid solution. So I get x is equal to 4 as my only possible solution.
Um, okay, this one's interesting because what we have to actually notice here is that that log expression, that squared, is actually around the whole log term. So it's not the log base 4 of x squared, it's log base 4 x all squared. So if I just rewrite it, if I make it a bit bigger, if I just rewrite it, it's just to make it more obvious, that's that log base 4 of x all squared. So if I do a little substitution here, u equal to log base 4 of x, I'm going to end up with 2u squared plus 5u minus 3 is equal to 0. So if I use my factorising knowledge, 2u minus 1m, u plus 3, and I get u is equal to half and u is equal to minus 3. So if I put my u back in, I get log 4, log base 4 of x is equal to a half, or log base 4 of x is equal to minus 3. So there's no issue with it equaling a negative number because my log graph has got negative values. So if my log expression is negative, or the final answer is negative, it just means that my x term um, is less than 1. So if I go through that process, I get 4 to the half is equal to the x, and 4 to the power of minus 3 is also equal to x, so I get x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 1 on 64. All right, nearly done. So now we've got a show question. Um, and so with our show questions, remember, show questions we need to start with the left-hand side and demonstrate that that left-hand side can be expressed in the same form as the right-hand side. In a proof question, well, you can manipulate both sides. So because it's a show question, I need to start with the left-hand side. So if I consider the left-hand side, um, it's a division. So I can separate the top numerator and the denominator by subtracting them. And then within each of those terms, I've got 64 times q squared, which is a 64 plus q squared. And then I've got subtract all of it, um, p cubed times q to the half, which is a log base four of p cubed plus log base four of q to the half. So now if I just sort of simplify as best I can, 64 is get it to a base 4 so that I can do some cancelling there, which is 4 to the power of 3. The q squared, the 2 can come out the front. My negative sign needs to multiply through, so the p cubed, the 3 can come out the front. The negative goes in and the half can also come out the front. So now I do know that log base 4 of p is x and log base 4 of q is y, so if I substitute those in, I get 3 initially and then 2 times y minus 3x minus half y. And if I group those together, I end up with the right-hand side, which is what I was looking for. Okay. Um, solving a couple of exponential equations, I guess it really is important we get used to identifying. It doesn't matter what the expressions are. When we have the equivalent of a quadratic expression, right, so it, it really doesn't matter in our trig when we get to it, we might have cos squared x minus 2 cos x plus 1. You know what I mean? And so that's like a u squared minus 2u plus 1 is equal to 0. So we've just got to be able to identify that if we have a term squared plus the term or minus the term, we could have a quadratic trinomial. So if I put u equal to e to the x, well, then u squared is e to the 2x, so in actual fact, I can express that tri that equation as u squared minus 8u plus 15, factorise that, I get u equal to 5 or 3. So that means if I substitute back the u term, e to the x is equal to 5 or e to the x is equal to 3. Use that log transformation, so just, I guess, to make it obvious, remember, it's log, the base number is e of 5 is equal to x. The base is e, log base, e, 3 is equal to x. All right, similar process. Again, you can see that e to the power of 2x. Get everything on the left-hand side, minus 9x minus 35 equal to 0. Um, again, the same sort of thing, e to the x, e to the 2x. So I get 2u squared minus 9u minus 35 is equal to 0, which factorises to a 2u plus 5u minus 7. 
which means u is equal to five, negative five or two, or u is equal to seven. So I put my e to the x back in, I get e to the x is equal to negative five on two, or e to the x is equal to seven. So obviously, e to the power of anything can't be negative. And just to, if I use my log transformation, I get log base e of negative five on two is equal to x. And again, you can't have the log of a negative number. So that's why there's no solution. And then we get e to the x is equal to seven. And so x is equal to the natural log of seven. All right, so just the last couple of little uh, examples. Our change of base has really come about because our CAS once upon a time couldn't evaluate logs unless they were base 10, base 2, and base E, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we're saying that the change of base law is if I, I can turn any expression, so let's just go like that. So I might have log, I don't know, base three, four. I can turn that into log base, any number I want. It could be 10, three, seven, 12, it doesn't matter. I can make it log base 10, four, which is the, okay, the log number over log base 10, three, which is the current base number. And now my calculator could evaluate that, okay? Now it's great because I can just put log base three, four into the case and get an answer. So if we just make use of that transformation knowledge, all right, first one here says if P is equal to log base five of X, find the following in terms of P. So I need to find out what X is. So if I just use my normal log transformation, um, if P is equal to log base five of Z, log base five of X, five to the power of P is gonna be equal to X. And so there's my expression, X is equal to five to the power of P. Um, the next one there, I, I want to find that expression in terms of P, which means really I need to incorporate log base 5x somehow. So I've got log base x of 81. If I turn that into a log base 5 expression, it's log base 5 of 81 over log base 5 of x. I know log base 5 of x is P, and log base 5 of 81 is just some constant term. So that's an expression involving P. I could have one on P, uh, log base five of 81. The final one here um, is a throwback to an old exam question. So again, I've got all these different logs and bases and I need to incorporate one over somehow. So if I think about log base CA, the first expression, if I turn them into log base A, I'll end up with a log base A on the top. Sorry, log base AA on the top, which is one. So I will get my one over log base AC, which coincides with one of my terms. If I check the next one, log base AB, what if I make that a log base B expression? So I get log base BB over log base BA. Again, I get my one over log base BA. And then obviously if I do the same thing to my log base C, log base B, C, um, I get a log base CC over log base CB, and again, one over. So I get an expression there of B. So look, it's not the kind of question that pops up much these days because we don't use the log change of base transformation very often, but it sometimes makes some calculations a little bit simpler.